Amen. 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 Pastor, may I say something sure. real quick? We forgot. I didn't know about it. It's Rose's birthday today. Oh my goodness. Okay. Happy birthday. Yes. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Praise the Lord. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, dear Rose. Happy birthday to you. Thank and you, many more. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. All right, Mama. Love you. I <laughs> love you too. Okay, turn with me, please, to the book of Matthew. Now, Matthew and Mark and Luke all have something to say on this issue. But uh, I'm going to deal with Matthew because he says uh, the most, uh, most about the issue. Just a little issue, and it's found in the 18th chapter of Matthew. Just a little subject. But it's a subject I think I needed to deal with because I want you to understand the value of uh, the human being from the time that they are conceived in the womb and they are an entity, a life, they are a person as they are growing in the womb and therefore anybody aborting for no, no special reason is murdering a human being. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I don't care, I don't care how you try to reason away that our United States is one of the worst of abusers of the laws of life. Because yes, our yeah. country is a, a murderous country. Six, Sixty million a year. Sixty million children a, children year, a year are killed. And that is sad. And I'm sure it hurts the heart of God. Sure. But that doesn't mean that uh, those little entities that God has made isn't making their abode in heaven. Because God is able to bring them to a place where they are fully developed, even outside of the womb, because it's going to be a brand new body anyhow. That's right. Amen. And we thank the Lord for that. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. You may keep a little child from living in this world, but you're not going to keep it from living in the world to come. That's right. Amen. Because remember what God said about Adam. God, God said that he made Adam out of the dust of the earth. Yes, he did. Okay, so he made him, but then there's a second part of that. He created a living soul. He breathed into the dust of the earth the breath of life. Yes, that's right. And yes. that is the part that goes to heaven. That's right. Amen. Get that down and hold on to it because that's the hope you and I have. That's Whenever right. this body returns to the grave, we don't die. No, because no. our spirit is alive. Amen. Yes. And the, Bible, yes. the scripture says that uh, he that believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall live. And he that does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that life is not in him. And the wrath of God abides on him. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Okay, so whenever you are, whatever you are at death is what you'll be throughout eternity. There is no purgatory. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Right. And therefore, right. wherever you are, whenever you die, you will be throughout eternity. So make sure you're ready to uh, die today, now, and not That's wait right. till another time to do it because today is the day of salvation. Amen. Yes, yes it is. And so as we bring Amen. this little scripture out here, which doesn't say too much, but gives us a wealth of knowledge because there's one issue I'm going to uh, work on, and that is uh, a scripture I'll bring out to you in just a moment. We're going to start with the 13th verse, and we're going to read through the 15th verse of the 18th chapter of Matthew. Then little children were brought to him, that he might put his hands on them and pray. That he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. What verse are you on? 13th verse. 13th verse. What chapter? Matthew chapter 18. Yeah, 18th chapter. Didn't I say that? I said that. Yeah. 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 That's not the verse. And if you should find that, assuredly I say to you, you rejoice. I think you need to. It is 19, I'm sorry. Oh. Chapter 19? 19. There's a division at the bottom of the page here. There's 19. Uh, 19, and I should have known that. I apologize. I stand rebuked. <laughs> Everybody give me a frown. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We forgive. 
Everybody happy? You're only human. Amen. Don't forget that. 1913. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. I want you to look at, if I may, and guide you step by step through the life of a little child. As we know, Jesus was a child at one point. And at the age of 12, is his first record in the Bible of his childhood, when he went to the yearly feast. And there he sat amongst the doctors and lawyers. And he listened to them. And then somehow he got some words in. And so whenever Mary and Joseph went home, they forgot to look for their son Jesus. About three days out on the journey, they realized Jesus wasn't there. Talk about bad parenting. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Talk about bad parenting. We see it in, our, in uh, Jesus' uh, mom and dad. So they returned and they found him in the temple. And the doctors and lawyers were listening to him. Yeah. Amen. And so he said, why? They said to him, why? Are you here? Why aren't you with us? You know that you're supposed to be with us. And Jesus looked at him in the face and said, Didn't you know I'm supposed to be about my father's yes. business? I must be about my father's business. Then it says he went down to dwell with them and to obey them and to live a life pleasing to them. So here we go. It says, Then the little children were brought to him by caretakers, by family, by parents, by whoever was concerned about the little children, that they would be blessed of God and they believed in God Jehovah and believed in Jesus Christ as the coming king, at least his healing power, because they felt if they could have their little children prayed for, that they'd be much better off because they were prayed for by this prophet this teacher, this renegade that the Jews and the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes are against. But they came seeking an opportunity for him to pray for them. Have you ever thought whenever you held your baby the first time after it began to cry that you were holding an Adam or an Eve made absolutely perfect but there's a seed inside that little entity that came from the curse of Adam. That's right. That's right. Amen. The evil seed that would show itself up more as it grew older. You can tell me stories about your little child, how they threw little carnal fits, how they learned to twist mommy and daddy around their little finger. How they got them up early in the morning at 2 and 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning to take care of them whenever they were trying to sleep. You can, I, you can tell me the stories. You know it's the truth. Yeah. But they're little angels. They're little beings. Perfect in the sight of God. Yes, they are. There's nothing in this world more perfect than a little child that's visited from time to time with an evil being, an evil spirit that causes them to be not themselves. Unless you permit them to continue on in the way of being evil and do not correct them properly, they will become more evil and more evil and more evil yes. until they themselves at the age of accountability will become evil doers. Yes, they will. And sometimes that happens even though the parents have very jealously and carefully brought the child up in the way that he should go. But something happens in his life where he goes out and seeks out trying to find out who he is and he strays for a period of time away from the teaching of mom and dad. That's right. 
That's not my point here this, uh, that I'm preaching to you, but I want you to understand the best parents have problems. In fact, I believe that the best parents that are trying to serve God the most, and sometimes they neglect their family because they're trying to serve God and be what they need to be for God, have more trouble with their kids because they haven't spent the proper quality time with them and there's a bit of breakdown somehow or maybe the child has become jealous of God because he takes up so much of mom and dad's time. That's right. Amen. Or her time. <coughs> Anyhow, they brought these little children to Jesus and he's healing the people as he goes away and the disciples say, no, 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 no. He's been too busy. He's been working his heart out. He's been healing people. No, don't bring those little kids. We don't need them. They're not significant. And Jesus said, suffer the little children to come to me. Because Jesus is the Lord of little innocence. Yes. Little impressionable souls that are going to be going the direction that they see and are taught and, re and know to respect. That's right. And so Jesus wants to pray for them. Jesus wants to spend a little time for them. And he makes time for them because, let me share with you what it says here. This one thing, it says that he might put his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked him. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of, the, of the such is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it is. He is saying, like a little child, those that are in heaven are just like them. That's right. In fact, the little child is going to be in heaven because there's nothing more perfect and innocent than a little child. Right. Yeah. I've never seen anybody in their older age as pretty and as beautiful in their actions and deeds as a little child that loves his mommy and daddy and loves Jesus and loves good. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm telling you, they can break your heart and they can make your heart. Amen. I have a, a special love for little children. That's why I feel very alarmed about a church that doesn't have little children here. I understand there's a great generation gap between me and them. But we need little children because our church is yes. sick. Yes. yes. We need teenagers, God help us, because our church is sick. <laughs> we do. And we need old people, which we have our share, thank God, of older people and middle-aged people. But we need a whole class of people so children can learn from their teenagers and the teenagers can learn from this middle class and the middle class can learn from the older class. Too often times, the children are not brought up to listen to their adults. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I can't blame them because of some of the things the adults do that I wouldn't want to learn. Right. How, why would I look to them? Because all that I see is bad and evil. And if that's a, being a Christian, I don't want any part of it. That's right. Amen. And what a witness. What a terrible witness. But let's look at the little child. The positive attributes of a little child. Okay? Little child is innocent. Yeah. Little child is perfectly innocent and there's no evil. Unless it comes out in the spirit of Adam. And therefore, even the police are finding out that if you really want the truth about what happened, ask a little child. That's right. And they will tell you the truth because they know nothing else to do. They haven't been taught the ways of their parents. They haven't been taught the ways of their outlaws, uh, relatives. They haven't been taught the bad things. They will tell you the truth. And if you watch the police, they will separate the little child as soon as they can in a situation where the little child may observe so they can get to the truth regardless of what the parents say and what the relatives say and whoever else is there. The adults, they can believe in what the little child will say and who he is confirming and supporting their view. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Because they're innocent. And people in heaven are innocent before Almighty God. Yeah. How in the world can we become innocent before Almighty God in heaven? By making sure our slate is clean and pure Amen. and white whenever we leave this world and our sins are under the blood yeah. of Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Praise be yeah. to God we have the blood to wash away our sins. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Water won't work. The 
to wash it away. No, no, no. Amen. Prayers won't work and won't wash it away. No, no, no. The truth won't work and wash it away if I speak it. It's only the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's only the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Secondly, they're sensitive. A little child is sensitive. You don't have to, you don't have to discipline a little child very much because they're sensitive to what you say. I have a little picture in my bedroom at home with a little girl, and she's standing over sort of like in a corner because mom and dad is disciplining her, and she's crying and weeping because something went on. And they may have had to whip her, but they may have just had to speak to her, and it broke her little heart. And there's a little doggy sitting on the floor like this and looking up and saying, what can I do for you? How can I help out in this terrible time? I'll tell you, I love the innocence of a child because they're not going to make up lies until they're taught how to lie by their environment, by their peers, or by their parents, or by someone else that is a caretaker or someone else they're spending time with. They're innocent little children, and in heaven, we're going to be innocent because all of our sins are forgotten and yeah. thrown into the sea called forget, and nobody's allowed to go That's fishing. Right. Praise be to God. That's right. Amen. So if anybody comes up to you and starts to deal with you and say, I remember back when, you tell them how you rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, hey, forget it. Stop right there because that's all under the blood and it's none of your business and it's nobody else's business because God's taking care of it. That's Hallelujah. Right. Praise be to God. My sins are gone forever. I'm free from my burdens of sin. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the glory of God. Amen. The third issue, my dear friend, is that they are teachable. Yes. Yeah. They're impressionable. Yes, they are. They're going to learn from you. When you get a little child around you, you need to be very careful of how you act. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Or how you react yes. in every situation. And know that that little child's going to read you like a book. That's right. Yeah. And it might be the only Bible that little child's going to remember because you impress them. They like you. They feel a kindred spirit, maybe. And they're going to watch you and they're going to act like you. I remember years ago, I don't know how long ago, but you may, some of you older folks with me remember that dad was walking down the path with a little boy and he'd kick the stone you know and the little boy find a stone and he'd kick it you know and the dad's walking along and then he stops and he looks around and he enjoys the beauty of the woods and he stands there and then he pulls out a cigarette and puts it to his mouth and lights it and the little boy's pulling out an imaginary cigarette and lighting it with an imaginary lighter and standing there acting like daddy How true it is. That's right. Yeah. It's not good. We need to be about our best behavior. My dad smoked from the time he was 13 years old. And we never knew it until, oh man, I was 15 years old before I found out my dad smoked. You know why? Because he never spoke to, smoked around eight kids. Until one day my sister Bonnie, which is within a year of me, under me, she came down to the garage and dad was inside. I call him Papa. Papa's inside the garage. And he had a cigarette in his mouth, and Bonnie came in, and she, he didn't know she was there, and he's puffing on this cigarette, and she went, hee hee. It broke my dad's heart. He was found out. And t Bonnie went running out of the shed, and my dad began from that point on to break the habit of cigarettes. And it was terribly, terribly hard, hard because he never got that habit broke until. About 58 years old. Yeah. Praise be to God. And then he became a preacher. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, ordained by the church of the Nazarene. And never ordains you after you're over 50. He was ordained at 60 years old. By the permission of the general superintendents. And preached until he died at 83. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. My papa's in heaven. And I'll tell you what, I could have had a closer relationship with him, but he had so many kids, I'm sure he was tied up a lot. <laughs> and I was the youngest kid, so uh, I was, you know, I was the one who got the bad jobs. <laughs> Anyhow, but I'll tell you what, little children will watch you, and they'll do what you do. 
So make sure you're careful because, you know, a lot of parents today think it's really funny whenever their little child says a curse word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, that is so cute. Wait until they grow up. That's right. Yeah. Now they're an embarrassment. Mom can't stand them, wants to get them out of the house. Dad can't stand them and wants to walk away and go away because he is an embarrassment because they taught him well how to curse and do dirty things and to act bad and he became a, a part of a gang. Out of the grip of God. Yeah. They are innocent and we corrupt them yes, we do. if we're not careful. We lead them the wrong direction. We don't take them to church and make sure they go to church. We don't read the Word of God in a family devotional meeting. We don't teach them the truth. We do not live the life that is love. We do not praise God and bring God up in the situation and give God the glory when things happen. And they don't know about God, even regardless of how much we think we're a Christian and a godly person. God is a stranger to too often to so many. Next new six thing is... That they're truthful. I've shared with that to, to you already. Because they'll tell you the truth. Yeah. And they'll live the truth according yeah. to how you've taught them. However you have said. It's the same with the prodigal son. He knew what the truth was. He knew what he should do. But he's of age. And so he takes a chance and says, Daddy, give me my inheritance. I want to go out and live because I've been here. I've been sheltered. I've been kept on this farm. And I don't like farming. I just want to go and live. Give me my inheritance. So his dad gives him his inheritance. And the boy goes right away. And he shares like he saw his daddy share. He gave away to the people that would ask. He gave away freely. He bought the drinks. He bought the food. He bought the entertainment for other people. And he squandered. He didn't give it into the kingdom of God. He didn't give it to people that really needed it. He gave it to the wrong crowd. And then he found himself without anything. He had just wasted it all. And yeah. now he's down to feeding a pig and eating a slop out of the pig trough. Yeah. In a country that raised pigs. A Jewish boy in a pig country. That's what happens whenever we wander away from God. That's what happens with our kids whenever we don't teach them right. They will not go in the way they should go. They will go in the way they should not go. And they will end up in big country. And it's only up to God. And He's the only one to bring them to their right mind. Yeah. Only one that can yeah. bring them to their right mind. He came to His right mind. Yeah. And He said, hey, my dad's worst, lowest servant is better than this. I'm going to go back and ask my dad to forgive me. I'm going to ask God to forgive me. And I'm sure he'll give me a job that I'll have a better, I'll have a better life than I have here. And he did. And you know the story. As his son came down over the horizon, he saw this boy yeah. coming. And he, he recognized the gait. He recognized the walk, the style. And he began to run, which is against the, the Jewish law. And old men don't run. Because he's got to be respectful. He's got to be dignified. But he took off running and he fell on his son's head, neck. And, he, and his son said, oh, Dad, forgive me, forgive me. And he said, kill the fatty calf. Bring the robe. Give me a ring. My son who was dead is now alive. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, boy. Praise what a God we serve. Amen. Amen. Yes. The next uh, quality and attribute of an innocent child uh, is discerning. He has or she has a discerning spirit. Think about it now. A little child can look at a dog and know whether it's a good dog or a bad dog. That's right. Come on now. Yes. A little child. If you go and you have your little child and mommy is holding a little child and a person comes up that he's not acquainted with or she's not acquainted with and she goes to hand the little child to the person and the little child goes, no, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't like the spirit of this guy. That's right. I don't like what this guy represents. You better listen to him. That's right. Because you can cause a lot of trauma. By causing a little child to do what they don't have to do and shouldn't be doing. Because they can discern the spirit of an evil spirit in the person. 
More than you can. More than I can. A lot of times we, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, and try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. We fall in bad company. And they're your friends until they've taken all your money. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And they've got everything out of you they can. And they've used you and now they walk off. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Discerning spirit. Give me a dog. I'll show you the same spirit in an innocent doggy. That's right. Yep. Yep. They can tell you whether a person's good or bad. That's right. When I walk bear around, we go around and all the neighbors know pretty well who we are. I know what yards to let him go and uh, exercise his, his uh, dogginess. <laughs> 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 and I know what to, where to let him go. And I try to get him to go to where the trees are there and it's not developed property because I don't want any neighbors aggravated in me and so sometimes he'll smell another where another dog is gone and he'll try to get over there and I'll lock up the leash so he can't get to it and I'll say no 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 bear next place and I'll take him on down the road and let him go someplace else but I'm teaching him how and he knows but whenever a person comes down the road you can see him either go toward them with smile and wanting to be loved and he's shaking his tail or you can see him drawn backwards Drawn away. And so whenever he draws back from a person, I just say, hi there. And I keep on walking. <laughs> and too often times, I have to tell you, I say hi, and they never respond. They don't even give a grunt. I wonder where in the world did these people come from? That's not American style. That's not American style. It sure ain't godly style. That's no. right. No. If you don't have time to say, so long. Mm -hmm. yep. And you don't tell that to a stranger because you don't know if they understand it or not. They might think you're cussing at them. But if, you, if they know what it means, it means peace. Yes. Yeah. Peace be with you. Yes. Yes. But my friend, whenever you say hi and they won't grunt at you, that's pretty bad. That's right. And I just, you know, I go down the road and I'm thinking, oh, you got to keep my mouth shut. I want to say, what was that? <laughs> Where did you come from? What planet are you from? You know, kind of deal. But anyhow, they are discerning. And finally, they're filled as much as you have worked with them with faith. Faith. You can take a little child. You can put them all high place. And make a little little uh, game and say you're holding your hands close by and say jump honey jump and he'll wonder about it first poppy will catch you poppy will catch you but then he'll jump and you'll grab him and then you'll make a big to do woo, woo, and he loves it he loves it and you put him up there and you come back over there jump honey jump and you can cause that little feller at your word to jump far and down low and you can catch them and make a big deal. And they will trust you because you've never failed them. Yeah, that's right. right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But if you tell them to jump and then you pull away. Yeah. Right. And they yeah. fall down and hurt themselves real bad. Yeah. They'll never trust you. That's right. Yeah. 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 Amen. That has to do with lesser things, of course. Like, uh, okay, son, here's $20. Go out and enjoy yourself. We'll see you at 12 o'clock. And the son will say, they just want to get rid of me. Yeah. They just want me out of their hair. Yeah. Yeah. I call that jerking them up. Not raising a child in the way he goes, but just jerking them up. And calling yourself a good parent because you gave them money. You gave them everything they wanted. Bad, bad, bad yeah. parent. That's right. Bad, bad parents because they're going to expect the world to give them all that they have yeah. and they're going to go out and do whatever they want to do and they haven't learned anything good from you. You are a bad, evil parent. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. And you'll be the first one to abandon them when they get in trouble and end up in a jail. And they'll want to turn you over to some, some uh, group or some... Uh, a uh, program or something like that and say, I don't want any part of you because you went out and did that. That's exactly what they did in there for you and what they're doing even today. They're out there breaking the laws on every hand, being places where they shouldn't go. I listen to these reports on the news and uh, a man gets almost killed by a woman 
And uh, she and he says, well, I went, all I did was I went out to a bar. Well, sure, stupid. What do you expect from a bar? Yeah, right. Well, I heard a couple of amens. Thank you, brother. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. You don't go to a bar to find a good girl. You don't go to a bar to find a good guy. You go to a bar to be in the dark and be in a, a wretched, filthy, dirty place because God's people shouldn't be That's and right. aren't in the bar. That's right. That's right. You have to go where God's people abide. <clears throat> Little children are imitators. They imitate. And so what are you given to do? Good or evil? Are you imitating good? Are you imitating evil? Or are you half and half? They don't know whether you're going to be good or you're going to be bad. They can't trust you. They can't depend on you. You said you'd be there, you weren't. They said yes, but they let you do it. And they said no, and they, 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 they I'm sorry. They said no, and you, you left them do it anyhow. And you said yes, and then you wouldn't let it happen. Yeah. Building up untrusting. How can a person trust a person that doesn't tell the truth? The Bible tells you when you say yes mean yes and when you say no mean no. Yeah. That's right. That's right. The Bible tells you to live a life for the brother person. The Jews were to get up in the morning and tell them about the law. The little ones around the breakfast table. They were to walk in the way as they went to school and tell them about the law. And then whenever they took a, a meal, they said their blessing and told them a little bit about the law. And when they came home, they would talk about the law. Whenever they sat at the supper table, they would talk about the law. Before they went to bed, they were talking about the law. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Except ye be converted as a little child and become a little child, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 17. And unless you become a little child, what's that mean? You have to unlearn yeah. to learn again. Yeah. The worst habit in the world is to unlearn to learn a new habit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. The hardest job in the world is to unlearn an old habit Amen. and learn a new habit. Amen. The unrighteous habit so you can learn the righteous habit. Amen. Because as long as that, un, that uh, old habit, that unrighteous habit is in there, it's going to be more seated and it's going to be a more part of you until you've had it taken up. Rock, lock, look. Uh, rock, stock, and barrel. Yeah, rock, stock, and barrel. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and up by the roots and plucked up cast away and now you're growing a brand new tree Amen. of righteousness whenever your child passed away your little child is going to be in heaven waiting for you yeah that's right yes right. and that little child is going to be the same as it was when it dies and I'll tell you why Paul said whenever uh, boy do I have that scripture this is first uh, Corinthians no second Corinthians I think it is Oh, I forget. I think it's the 19th chapter. Look it up, Mrs. Hall. He said, when I was a child, I speak as a child. Yeah. And I did things like a little child. But then when I became grown up, I grew up and put away childish things. That's the 13th right. right. yeah. chapter of 1 Corinthians. Do it again. 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Read it for me. I want that whole section there. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Go ahead, more. For now we see through a glass darkly. There we go. Now we but see through a glass. But then face to face. Face to now, face. Now I know in part. In part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. I will be known as I was known. You will see your little child because it is the jewels that God has gathered together and the Bible speaks of it to decorate the throne of grace and to be operating in heaven because there's nothing more beautiful than a little child and you will know that little child because it is the way you remember them and they will be known by you because you are their mother, their father. And everything will be perfect. We're going to have children. We're going to have teenagers. We're going to have uh, middle-aged people whenever they're at their prime like Jesus was in perfect prime condition 
And we're going to have some old people probably, but they're going to be renewed in a brand new body. Yeah. And the oldness is not going to count. Yeah. You can run down a hill and in the valley and jump over trees and do whatever you want to because you're going to be young. I'm going to tell you, in my spirit, I'm growing younger every year as I get closer to the end. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You, I don't know if you're experiencing what I am, but my body says, you know, my mind says, yeah, I can do that. And my body says, you better not try. <laughs> and you already tried that one time. It didn't work very good. But my mind says I can because I can do better than I ever did before because I know more and I know how to do it. But the, my body says, you better not try because you're too old. You've passed that age. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> That's the bad part of getting old. Yeah. And I'm there. I'm getting older. Me too. <laughs> I must teach my children. <clears throat> I must teach my children the way of life because I don't want the wrath of God dwelling on my children. Right. And if I teach my children wrong, they will, because of my sins, suffer for my actions and my deeds up to four generations. Yes. Yeah. Because I taught my children, they taught their children my, my teachings, and their children my teaching, and their children my teachings. Because I'm a part, and that's why God annihilated whole nations, wives, husbands, kids, because they were taught wrong, they were worshipers of idols, and they were evil in every way. Are you hearing me? So when Paul, what are people say? Well, why did God take out great nations? Because there is no way He can salvage them. Because they were they were basking in, they were influenced by, and they were taught from their youth to worship idols and to not respect God, their great Creator. That's sad. I would say, uh, of course, God would be compassionate, and He'd redeem any little child that hadn't been taught too long, too wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And they'd go to heaven because I'll tell you today, my friends, how can some of these little kids, I see how God, I, I see why God's taking so many young ones out. Like that little boy that was killed over here in Brooksville and attacked by his own two dogs. And the grandfather's own two dogs. And why did God permit that to happen? Because, hey, it wasn't his fault that the grandfather wasn't paying attention to him. It wasn't God's fault because the, 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 the guy that had dogs that might be able to do that and he should have respected that fit, uh, situation. But God has decorated the throne while the little boy is in the mouth of the dog. The little boy is in the throne of God, decorating the throne of God forever. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. be to God because he's not the loser. Yeah. Oh, finishing up here. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the children crying Hosanna as Christ came into the city. To the son of David, they were sore displeased. Matthew chapter 21. They were now beginning to plan the death of the son of David, the son of God, that the children cried out to. And in their sweet spirit, their discerning spirit, they knew that Jesus was a perfect man and they, he was the only one that they wanted to be around. They wanted to come close to him and they cried out and sang a song, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. My friend, it would behoove us to watch children. Remember my wife and I were at, we were at a little thing going where we were at a playgrounds and they had this uh, little slide, you know, where these kids slide down and hit the dirt. And uh, little boys and girls would climb up there and they'd come down the slide. And if they hit right, fine. This one boy comes down and falls right on his butt and hurts himself. He gets up crying and the tears are running down his face and he runs to mama. And mama's there to catch him and to comfort him. Here comes another little boy down. And he comes down head, face, head first and hits himself and puts mud in his nose. And he gets up with a big old smile on his face, run right around there again, buddy. He right up there to do it again. <laughs> that's <a> show. <laughs> that shows you the difference between kids. 
You're either positive or you're negative. Yeah. If you're a negative child and you keep being negative and being baby by mom and dad and all that stuff, I'm not telling you to be mean, but hey, encourage them to try it again. That's get right. back on that yeah. bull ride. Yeah. Make sure you can get that thing accomplished. Don't let them yeah. have fears in their lives. But no, and put a little smile on their face and get up and dust themselves off and they're going to go right back up there and they're going to slide back down again. Yes, yes. 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 amen. <laughs> so true. Let's be children. Let's not ever grow up to a place we're beyond God. Yeah. You know, to walk in the light yeah. as He is in the light. Yeah. That's God the Father having fellowship one with the other. And the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, will cleanse us from all of our sins. Yes, the only Amen. eternal security in this world, world worthwhile is whenever I hand, hold on to the hand of Jesus Christ. I should put it on my most, <laughs> most strong hand. Uh, with Jesus Christ. And I'll hold on to him with a tight grip. And I'll grab onto the world and try to pull others in with a loose grip. So I can break loose and stay with Jesus and never be pulled in. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's what we want to do. Yeah. We want to influence as much as we can and bring in as many as we can. But don't let them pull us out. Don't ever come closer to somebody than you are God. Because he is your savior. He is your keeper. He is your wonderful Lord. Amen. And he loves you. Amen. I tell you the truth. Praise be to God, Mrs. Hall. Come, if you would.